history in the making. Healing to be awakened. Yeah, you are the star of your story at Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rushumba. You know, my son is born on a Wednesday. Being a belt because they are the largest group. Mm. And so my... You, you got your back. No, we're not perfect. And, um... So now you know, it's time to grow at Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rushumba. Let the healing begin. Yeah, so tell me your experience uh, uh, about, uh, you know, how you were able to be aggressive and get those right shots. Well, I, I have a few stories, but I'll just share the one yeah. with the box because I got one with Obama, of all people. Oh, you caught a President Obama, yeah, too? Yeah, a special meeting. I don't know how. I mean, God opens doors, but that's Here all I can say. Here in California? Yeah, it was in California. I was able to um, walk right in. Because, I mean, a lot of people know me here in Sacramento, yes. so, you know, they know the face. So, oh, yeah, you know, you're good. Yeah. Come on in. And I just walked into a meeting. Face and recognition. And I was face to face with Obama. In fact, um, we, me and Obama had a few words. <laughs> in a positive way? Well, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of positive. It wasn't really positive. It was all good, though. You know, I, mean, okay. I have respect. He's like a year or two older than me. And, yes. um I respect my elders, no, yeah. <laughs> but no, no, we just bumped heads, but then we could, we took a picture together, and yeah. we should see on the wall, on my wall of him I have, um, but no, the, back to, like Larry was saying about the fights, um, I was sitting way up there, well, I, I, I never went, even went to my seat, Yes. I, oh boy, how can I start the story off? Well, on the way to the fight uh, was Sugar Ray Leonard and Donnie Lalon. Sugar Ray came out of retirement. This is 1989. Sugar Ray Leonard and who? Sugar Ray Leonard and Donnie Lalon. Donnie Lalon. Yeah, he okay. said he was talking a lot of garbage to Sugar Ray. I'm going to retire you again and all that. Okay. Long story short, Sugar Ray did win, you know. But anyway, um, we were driving through the desert, me and my reporter, um, Rick Warren, and um, I, the sun was going down. It was a beautiful sunset the, the, on the desert, the sand. I also get out the car to get a quick shot. You know, that's what we do <laughs> as photographers. Mm -hmm. And went back to my car, opened my trunk up, and guess what? I had left all my cameras at home. <laughs> all my gear was left oh. in Sacramento. We we're mm -hmm. almost in Las Vegas, in the middle of the <laughs> desert. And um, so Rick Warren was not a photographer. No, he was just a re reporter. He was okay. basically just going to the fight to get in. <laughs> okay. But I mean, that's what you know. Yeah. Some of the reporters do, really. Right. But, um, yeah, so my thing is I looked at my car, I said, oh, I left all my gear, my film and everything, but I had one camera, my, my, I call it my dummy camera, it's a little cheap camera I had, you know, you talk about your little camera, I had a camera like that, it was a Nikon, I yeah. had one lens, it was a 180, and we needed like a 600 or 400 to be way up there in the back. Mm -hmm. To catch, the, to catch pull the, things the, the, close, the, the fight. And, yeah, yeah close-ups. So I didn't have the right gear, so I was like, oh, so I have to get more film, and uh, we went to the fight, and I went from way up there, I sent all the way down. I don't know how the doors open on that, but I sat next to Clifton Davis, mm. the actor, I guess singer, actor, Clifton Davis. Actor, yeah. And I was right there with the 180, it was a perfect aim, you know, perfect um, vision of the, um, of the fight, of the yes. ring. So I shot my shots. At that time, again, my good cameras were at home. This camera here might have shot like two frames a second. <laughs> my other camera might have shot maybe five frames a second, my F3. And know. a real one sh shoots how many? At least six frames a second. Okay. You know, six in every second. Okay. Mine, the old cheap camera I had was like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, like so my camera. So it's all about the skills and the timing of everything. Wow. And that's what, we, that's what I had to do, at least. But anyway, I got some pretty good shots from that fight. And I recall at the end of the fight, me and Clifton Davis gave each other a high five because... No, we gave each other a five back then. Yeah. Because um, she really knocked the dude out, and it was great. And my last frame I got at the fight was Shigure held the belt over his head, which y'all see, I'll show you on the film. Okay. And uh, that was my last frame, and that was one of my powerful shots, too. I mean. Wow. Was, so, so what would you say that lesson is? I mean, you're a photographer. <laughs> you left all your gear at home. You just have to have it happen to have that, that's a. That's rare that it happened. Yeah. <laughs> but. You showed some kind of stamina and some kind of uh, ability that no matter what, I'm going to get it. And even and having that do. small yeah. camera, you were able to get great shots. Yeah. You didn't let it, you know, deter no, no, that's, you. That's called confidence. Said, no, I'm, I'm getting, like Larry said, I'm getting my shots. <laughs> I got my shots. And um, again, you see on the slideshow, well, not slideshow, you see on um, the images of yeah. the top. 
But it's important for the young people to know that, that, you know, don't th this up. is the, yeah, don't give up. You know, doors may sh close or you may have to creep to right before it shuts off or, but, you know, you cannot give up because you could have just thrown up your arm and said, well, I'm you know, oh, yeah, stuck. because oftentimes they say go to the very back, <laughs> you know, and that <laughs> little camera would yeah. do nothing. So you just had, yeah. and then having faith. It's all about faith. Having faith that things are going to align when you get there anyway. Spiritual faith. So Spiritual thank faith. you for that. That's a really good uh, story, which is a factual story. Audience, so you see, I got real gems today too, huh? Mm -hmm. Real icons sitting here with me. They're talking photography, but it's good to apply in different ways in our lives, isn't it? So thank you again for that. Um, whew, let's see. So, what did you learn about our struggle as African Americans through the eyes of behind the lenses? What did you learn when you went out there and took certain pictures and, you know, because sometimes you're catching pictures of pain, mm -hmm. gain, winnings, losing. How about death? Hmm. Did you capture those that have traumatically been killed and murdered and you capture anything like that? Well, I have a story. Back in 1989, October 17, 1989, mm. again, me and Rick Warren went down to the to Bay Area to capture Earl Graves. He's a publisher of the Enterprise Magazine. He's now gone now. And um, I recall Rick was driving, and I, I fell asleep in the car. And I, I recall waking up, seeing the exit sign. We're in Oakland, and the sign said uh, 14th Avenue or 14th Street and 18th Street uh, exit. And, you know, thought none of it. We mm -hmm. got off that freeway. It was the 880, the Cypress mm -hmm. Freeway. Mm -hmm. And, like I said, October 17th, that's the day of the earthquake. Oh. So we were in the Clorox building, and when the earthquake struck at 504, I mean, I remember this. That's my yeah. first real earthquake I ever felt. Yeah, I was in yeah. San Jose. Oh, so you felt it too then? Yeah. That was yeah, our, our roof came in, you know, in our building, and um, my lights fell over, and we got out of there. I mean, that was like a panic. I felt like someone was, like, shaking me. That's how strong it was in the high-rise building we were in. That's, mm -hmm. histori this, that's historical and, uh, we, California. I, I'll show you photos of that, too, yeah. on, on our slideshow here. And um, my thing is, I, I, was, I was young, young and dumb, I guess they say. I climbed up on top of the freeway. I, after we had seen a collapse, well, we didn't see a collapse, but it was a collapse. We just mm -hmm. got off that freeway, really. And that same sign that I said, the 14th and 18th Avenue mm -hmm. exit, it was laying down on the ground because it, it fell it down. It fell right onto the... If was there another down. freeway beneath it? No, it was just uh, this. Uh, it was a regular street there. Okay. And um, it might have been Broadway. We we're off of Broadway. I okay. Think. But the freeway was right there by Broadway. And um, again, that same song I woke up and seen was crushed on the ground. I took a picture of that. I recall it was the film days back then. But um, again, I smelled bodies burning. They were smashed in the cars. It was really dangerous. I mean, I wasn't thinking because I was just trying to get that yeah. shot. And again, if it had been another aftershot, it could all came down. I would have been part of that. Did you hear what he said? He was just went. It's time to get the shot, get the picture. You know, that's a photographer. That's what he thinks of when he looks at scene. I'm not saying that it was negative, but you know, someone needed to capture that time because that's historical. Yeah. I know my dad. He had a young lady that worked with him at his at the job at the time. She was crushed. I mean, the, mm. the freeway collapsed on the second, well, on the first deck. Yeah down to the last place of the car. That's how much they were just smashed. They were entombed. And then you just smell the bodies burning, you know, that were, I think it was 54 people that died. Why um, was it smashed? Was it fire? Yeah, it was fire. It was smashed in the so, cement. So, they, the, so the, 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 the cars exploded? They couldn't blow up enough with all that cement on it. It was okay. just, just like simmer, just okay. burning. It was, I never forget that smell wow. really. But um, that's a crazy story. And you captured that photo? Well, I got the Some shots, it, yeah, yeah, but it was nothing to see. It was, yeah, it was just, it's smashed. just the, the Until they took it apart, they seen all the smashed yeah. cars and the bodies and all that. The one he should tell you about is <laughs> his experience with Bill Cosby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> tell him about that. Oh, yeah. what? I forgot about I that one. <laughs> oh, wow. I know he's a negative subject nowadays, but still. It, well, it shows no, you kind of some of the stuff you go yeah. through when you're dealing with photography and stuff like that. 
Girls house behind. Is this yeah. one that was you know the struggle of African American you know in <laughs> any way or what 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 would you well, say? Well, it wasn't a struggle. It was just um you know. We're tired for dealing with somebody. Just dealing with per- different personalities. I mean, okay, we, we tell got, me about that. I mean, I, I was up in paradise with Trump and them. You know, I mean, there's just different people we deal with. With who? President Trump at the time. For the Paradise Fire. So this is recent. Recent. You know, okay. I was shooting. My daughter went to Chico State, mm-hmm. and I went up there, and the whole city was closed down. And I'm in there with the, all the rubble. You know, I mean, it, it, the whole city was closed down. It was burnt up. Right. Right. I was out there shooting pictures. And, you know, some of the white officer they seen me like, so get that. Well, you know, he seen my big lens, so they you know they left me alone. You have to wear a tag saying you're well, a photographer I, we, sometimes too. Well, we uh, have our ID. We wear our IDs okay. and everything, but um. I could tell they wanted to come, and I, I was the only black photographer. Yeah, they wanted to be sure you weren't there disguised <laughs> yeah, and trying to. Yeah, people were like looting, they right. loot and all that. You know, were again, you with them? No, no. Larry okay. wasn't with me on that one, but um, we were together on Nelson Mandela. Okay. But on the Trump thing, again, the city was closed down. I was in there shooting, and um, and I just lost my, my plane. <laughs> the story, but it was just. It was just but you were talking about yeah. um, what's his name? The. Cut. Cosby. Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. Oh, I know we're jumping around now. But no, Bill Cosby, um, again, I had my video camera s- set up. I was working with a reporter of ours, um, Sharon Chandler, and mm-hmm. um, she wrote a book on Bill Cosby, you know, a positive book. And um, his people came in, his PR people came and said, hey, you got five minutes to, to talk with Bill and get your quick interview and your quick snapshots. So I had my video camera set up, and, um, you know, I'm ready to go. And then Bill Cosby walks through the door. And he goes to meet Sharon and shakes her hand. My job as a photographer is to capture that moment. Yes. And that somehow offended Bill Cosby. So he walked up on me, I mean face to face. Bill's a little bit taller than me. And I'm spinning because I'm like, this guy's in my face. Anybody else I would have, you know, dropped quick. But I thought this is Bill Cosby in my face. And um <laughs> What did he say to you? Um, he said, hey, 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 and his people, and his PR people cut off all my video cameras for no lawsuits, I guess. So me and Bill Cosby face to face, <laughs> I'm spinning, I'm like, okay, Bill Cosby's in my face. So, hey, aren't you going to introduce yourself to me, you know, before I start shooting? I'm thinking as a photographer, maybe he's mad because he wasn't dressed, he was dressed in yeah, stress. He was, yeah, because. So maybe he wasn't dressed right, like oh, I'm shot. thinking of it. Yes. But my thing is, <laughs> oh, you got on this one, Larry. Um, again. I put my hand out and said, hey, you know, I'm Robert Marilyn, welcome to Sacramento. I put my hand out and he left me hanging for a minute. Then he shook my hand. But see, I'm still spinning. I'm thinking of self-defense. Right? Right. I, you know, yeah. And there's somebody getting your face that quickly, yeah, man. That, that could throw you off. Such an icon like him, you know, you'd be like, yeah. wow. I was spinning. You know, I've seen his eye yeah. and all that, you know, kind of destroyed. His, you know, he's losing his vision. But it was just, wow, Bill Cosby's in my face. I was just spinning, really. Like, like I said, I was just, just mm-hmm. floating around. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I shook his hand and... um. And things were cool. He said, okay, I want to follow your directions now, you know. And Sharon was telling him, well, let's go over here. He said, no, no, that's your photographer. Let him tell me. I'm still spinning, thinking of so <laughs> defense. Yeah, what was that about? It's well, hard to shake it. And then what gets me, though, people say, oh, he was just playing around. But we know when people are serious. Yeah. Bill was serious. I'm thinking, of, he just lost his son. And oh, he during that dressed. time. Yes. Yeah. But no, no, but see, Bill went out there in his sweats. He signed my DVD, you know, um, you know. He was trying to joke around, but I was still spinning around like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. He's showing that he's a feisty black man, too. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, and, you know, being up there, you know, you kind of have to ask questions all the time. You know, what, what's your intention? You know, why do I always have to? Sometimes they get mad to have a camera in their face. That's Wouldn't true. you say that? True, true. And so. I might have Jesse Jackson say, man, put that camera down. I mean, uh, that's what we do. You know, we, we shoot. Well, you know, we, think of, we, we think of today, mm. you know, um, and you don't have to be a star for someone to have a camera on you, and next thing you know, it's on YouTube. That's true. You know, iPhones and all that. There, you that know. me with uh, Harry Belafonte. We were shooting him in Davis, and we went backstage, and it was dark back there. And I didn't want to use a flash, but I had to use a flash in some settings, you know. And I was bouncing a flash off a wall, and it was hitting him, you know, and I was getting some pretty good shots. And he just said, "Hey, could you, could you not?" Put that flash on me, please. And I was like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to turn it off and shoot, you know, shoot uh, without the flash. But uh, yeah. you get in s- situations like that sometimes where, you know. You they know, forget you who you are. Yeah. You, you know, I am a photographer. I'm not just here to just sit here and watch you. I'm here to take your photos. Well, it's, it's a lot of respect things, too. Yeah. Because the brother um, recently, uh, what's his name? Um, he did the fist up. Uh, I can't think of his name. Help me out. Um, 
that the black Olympics. power. Yeah, the black. Well, at the Olympics, he was the lifting. Yeah. Um, this is Tommy. Um, oh, what's his name? Help me out. Well, we we get it. Well, Tommy we, Smith, I think it was. Was well, I think it was the other gentleman who came no. in second. Well, came in third place. Yeah. Um, um, we just recently posted some photos recently, and I brought my leather glove. I want him to do a picture with me and him for my wall of fame to mm. be on my wall. He said, "Well, no, nah, I don't. I don't do that no more. I just let <laughs> other folks do that." You know. <laughs> so he told me to put the glove on. You know, and um, we got a picture. The Sacramento Bee shot this picture of me and him. He, I had my fist up, and the Bee, all the photographers shot our picture, and he was just pointing to my my fist okay. up. Okay. And yeah. after it was all over, he came to me and said, I really resp have respect for you because a lot of people would be aggressive. Yeah. You know, I don't want to say this is a white photographer. Yeah. Other photographers would be more aggressive yeah. and want him to put that glove on. Yeah. He said, you are very respectful. Yeah. When I tell you no, that was no. Mm -hmm. I did the glove myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I would never forget that. He was really, uh, you, know. you know, very humble. Yeah. So I'm glad you respected me and didn't force me to try to put this glove on, you know. And I, I was very that for Yeah, too. no, that... <laughs> Wow, that's going to be awesome because not only is he telling us where he's been and who he's taken photos of and locked in time, but no, you're going to no. get to see a little of the clips on these videos, folks. Right. You know, so these, these two gentlemen are, um, they're an asset to our community. And I, I'm very humbled to be sitting here and... You know, as I do my part, you know, I, I don't, de I don't declare that I'm perfect. I'm learning as I go along. So it, it's so lovely to sit with you all as you share, you know, your experiences and the years you've uh, applied yourself. Uh, you know, recently the Observer celebrated what, 61 years, 62, 60 years, 60 60 years. years. Yeah, uh, anniversary. But 60 year wouldn't that be 2022? I keep asking the question. Well, it would be 61 now, but yeah. But who is celebrating for the 60 year? Uh, in the 60th yeah, year. Yeah, I always go back a year for whatever reason. Oh, okay. Because I, I just turned 60 myself. I'm born 63. Okay. Like you're saying, you know, this is 2023 now. Right. So 60 years. 60 year November. would have been November 22nd, 2022. Uh, right, right. Six, cause no, now 62, yeah. Right? So well, I guess it's, it's like a, a month and a half, whatever, yeah. you know, 63, because I'm born in January, just mm -hmm. like the paper you're trying to say. Well, this is a whole November year later. Mm -hmm. This is 2020. Yeah. Not to debate it, but, you know, <laughs> hey, I, I'm not trying to push my birthday ahead until it gets there. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, that was huge for uh, the observer you know, to be able to withstand the seasons. And I'm sure both of you played a very big part in it. You know, the, the capturing of the, the uh, events that occurred in the community and, and over the years. And, and there's a lady that recently passed away that, you know, she was the first black councilwoman Kelly in Sacramento. Kearney. What was her name? Kelly, Kelly Carney. Kelly Carney. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine you have caught had some pictures of her over the years, yeah. huh? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about who she is, uh, because, you know, I didn't hear the name before, uh, maybe because I came to Sacramento in the mid-90s. And for those that are watching this show all over the world, because, you know, YouTube would take you all over the world, I'm in Sacramento, California, USA. <laughs> so to you in uh, Ghana... USA. <laughs> so this particular woman, you know, to be a black woman, first councilwoman in the Sacramento region in the 80s or 70s, 70s, from 75 to 77. I think she did two years then. Um, but what was powerful about her? Because she just passed away uh, October. I this think year, it was around yeah, the 30th. This year. So, uh, but people are really speaking about her, and you captured her picture. So, what kind of tale would you say she told? Just briefly, you don't have to go deeply in she it. She was so just a powerful, she had a powerful presence, and, uh, you know, she would push for things that should be done that other people tried to refuse, you know, especially for blacks and stuff like that. She Didn't take no for an answer. Mm -mm. And uh, she would just push ahead. She'd find ways to make things happen. That's correct. And... Um, even up until uh, the WCIC, WCIC Women Women's Civic Improvement yeah. Yeah. Uh, Center. I know she, where she, that is. She ran that for a while, oh, and yeah. uh, she got a lot of people involved, and in, you know, providing for people who needed to be provided for and stuff like that, especially 
older black women and families and stuff yes. like that. So Food yeah. giveaways and all that. Wow. I'm very helpful in the community. Mm-hmm. I'm involved with all that wow. stuff. And, uh, Do we yeah. have anyone like that in our community right now that you could point a finger to? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, Kevin Johnson did a lot for Old Park, too. You yeah. know, he rebuilt Old Park. Who? Kevin Johnson. Ke- okay, Mr. The, the, the mayor. Kevin, oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. And his mother has underground Georgia. books there. Yeah. Georgia. Yeah, Rose. Ma- yeah, Mother yeah. Rose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's running his bookstore, yeah. He, <laughs> he bought yeah. that bookstore and put her in there. So and put her in there. That's yeah. a love of a son, though. Absolutely. So if it's no. for the mother, it's for the son, it's, it's one and the same, would you say? Yeah, yeah, a lot of family. Yeah. A lot of things that we got fixings over there on the theater. The yeah, piano, fixing I mean, the restaurant. The barber shops. I so mean, if you're yeah. ever in Sacramento, you know, Broadway and 35th. Yes, 35th and Broadway and 35th, you can find, you know, the, the legacy of Kevin Johnson, the mayor of Sacramento during the years of um, Obama. And, oh, yeah. you know, his mother has a bookstore there that gifted by the son called On the Ground Books. You can find books about your story. And you all know I love to read. Mm. I wouldn't be sitting here without going into the literature and finding out the story about who we are. Because oftentimes this cannot be found in school. And so, uh, you know, let's promote her business. Uh, the fixing is a good soul food type of restaurant, very healthy, uh, to a degree, you know, it's healthy, <laughs> I don't know. I, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's, yeah. Let's go back to uh, uh, Cali Carney real quickly. This is uh, something that yeah. affected so us. Yeah, so just if you get a chance to do that, just go. And yeah, yeah let's go back yeah. to Cali yeah. Carney. Yeah, I was going to say what happened, that happened for us is that when we were putting on a, 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 a what do you call it? Um, a, a zip, exhibit at, ex- uh, at the bookstore. Yeah. We were honoring our African American black women here yeah. in Sacramento okay. at the bookstore. And what uh, period and in time was this about? This was about nineteen. Well, not a nineteen. Excuse me. Um, 2020. Well, four years ago, huh? Yeah. Four years okay. ago. Okay. And uh, what happened is we talked to her daughter about seeing if she could get her mom to come to this thing, and she came back. She said, "No, nah, she says my mom's not gonna be able to come." She says, "I'm sorry, but you know, she's." Okay. She was. They had put her. She was kind of in a home at that time. Right. You know, but she still had most of her faculties and stuff like that. But what happened is, all of a sudden, we're having to put our event on, and then all of a sudden, she shows up. <laughs> and we're like, whoa. You and think that she tricked? Honor, yeah. Honor. Yeah, and what happened is that when the daughter told her, your mom, no, you can't go, so we're just telling her you're not going to be there. She's the kind of woman that you don't tell her no, no. what she can do and what she can't do. And that's what she that's was her doing. her legacy spoke of that, she, right? She said, yeah, and so she showed up, and she sat right there, wow. along with uh, uh, um, we had Irene, uh, Irene West. West. and, yeah, and yeah. We had a uh, uh, boy, but... Uh, Cornel West's mother. Mm-hmm. Brian Ruthie Bolton, the gold medal winner. Uh, okay. Who's the one with the air? air? Oh, Edith Roberts. Yeah, she was married to the first. You can see this black. picture. You see this picture. We got you a lot. You captured those pictures as well we that got day. Yeah, they were there for, for us putting on this event and stuff like wow. that. And, uh, I mean, by us shooting people in the public, in a way, they become our friends too, like yes. a family, really. Yes. That's what I can't describe that really, but it's an honor to. Yeah. Have met all these icons, really. Yeah, and that's male what happened, and female. That's what happened when they had the 60th anniversary just what, a couple of weeks ago. Yes. Robert was there, and Larry talked about everything under the sun, but he didn't mention some of the staff. And yes. The, the, the main staff that was dealing with the public was me, Robert, and Ray. Okay. We were the three photographers. They got they, they covered most of the stuff out there. 80s, okay. 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. I guess Larry had too many things on his mind, and at first he didn't realize. Larry's the son of. Yeah, he's uh, the one that's running uh, it now. The publisher. The publisher. Uh, so he's you know trying to close up the event, you know. Right. And uh, right. <laughs> I think he said, "What did Larry say something? Oh, we hadn't done a toast yet." Yeah, Larry was going to do a toast. You know, everybody yeah. toasts. You know, right. it's the anniversary. And what'd you say? And um. He said, hey, where's our champagne? Where's, you know, where's, what about our toast? And um, I said, here, I'll toast you, Larry. I said, here, here. And I made, <laughs> I made a little noise to put it in yeah. his ear. And he said, Boom. you know, before I go on, yeah, let me th- saw him, thank my three like, photographers, you know. Yeah, the eyes. And then he came out, and we, I'll show you on video, too, on our video here. Okay. And we uh, did, okay. Go ahead. I was going to say, he, he didn't say all, and he said, I'll just say three names. That, I'll just say the first names. And he said, Robert, Larry, and Ray. Because okay. he knew that everybody knew right. us, because we were always the ones out there Mark covering the observer for for the observer and stuff like that. And you're correct because you know I started yeah. in this community in 1995, mm-hmm. and you know 
over those years, I always saw you. I, I don't recall seeing you as much. Really? I may have seen you, but not yeah. as much as I would see him. Yeah, this is my man here. You know? Yeah, um, I'm just tall. <laughs> that's all that oh, he's just tall. Yeah, that's what tall I'm and quiet. <laughs> he quietly just do his thing from a distance. Not saying, but yeah, I remember you more than he. Mm. But I, I do vaguely remember you, you know. I had a different hairstyle back then. Okay. And I More tried conservative. To, and I tried to be Flash quiet. some of that in the video so we can see how you look oh, back then. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I tried to be quiet. But let's let me get this one incident and then I'll let's go back to what you're talking about. So we're covering something at the WCIC <laughs> and they were having a meeting. They were in this big room and uh, I came in the room. You know, they had already started and it's like crap in the room. A lot of times you just kind of quietly get, go wherever you got to go try yeah. to get a shot. So I got in the room and had to walk past this rack where they had cheers you know they brought in this mm -hmm. rack of cheers and mm -hmm. they'd taken half the cheers off of there and they had all set up and everybody was sitting there watching and stuff like that and i had to just get past that that <laughs> rack to try to get some pictures of them it's a crowded room yeah <laughs> and i bumped the cheer rack and the cheers <laughs> boom 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 they all fell <laughs> as soon as they got quiet somebody in the says the observer's here. <laughs> that that, so that must have been uh, a, yeah, a very humorous moment. Now, yeah, did they catch yeah. a picture of you in no, that? No, <laughs> Lucky they did not go. I mean, I just felt wow. so bad. Wow, yeah, like, what did you do? I mean, that, yeah. I just went on about my job. I was like, man, I'm trying to ignore that, you know, it happened. <laughs> and, uh, but it was a very embarrassing moment. But <laughs> Well, as pro photographers, we do have our blooper wheels, we call it bloopers. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. was one of his for fun. him. What was yours? Uh, I'm going to share mine. <laughs> yeah, come on. You want to share it for him, Larry? Oh, boy. Tell him about it. Come that. on, what, what is yours? What are you talking about? The, the, the piano? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> tell us your blooper moment. <laughs> share mine. I was single at the time, so I'll say that. I was single. <laughs> well, I'm single now, too. But anyway, um, my, my thing is, um, I was at this... Big meeting, like Larry said, big old meeting. I was, we're at a hospital, I think, an auditorium in a hospital. Mm -hmm. Here in Sacramento? Here in Sacramento. Okay. And um, at the time, I don't know why, I had three cameras on, one around my neck, and one arms. Mm -hmm. And um, a doctor was speaking. It was, you know, a room full of people. I'm the only one moving around. <laughs> I noticed a piano sitting there. <laughs> and I, you know how they say it was <laughs> deja vu, you know? Yeah. I had a vision of me hit. Messing with that piano, messing, you know, doing something to the piano. But anyway, it was a it was a cute girl there. She was checking me out. You know, I'm checking her out too. But I, you, know, you got closer to the. So now I'm actually picture the doctor speaking. But anyway, um, as I got by the piano for some reason, I was gonna get this one shot of the doctor, and uh, my camera fell off my shoulder. Um, you know, these cameras cost thousands of dollars. Yes. Uh, and these are heavier too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Heavy Sorry. You know, the face of the camera fell off my shoulder. I went to catch the camera. I hit all the keys on my piano. <laughs> <laughs> but I caught the camera. <laughs> and everybody stopped. The doctor started by the <laughs> It's like you want to get away moment. So man, I, I would you never forget that. Be there. I never. Can you imagine a quiet room and hitting yeah. all the keys of the piano? Yeah. <laughs> What's this guy doing? Did, did you just stand up and take a bow? <laughs> no, I was so embarrassed to yell at him. You know, sometimes you gotta go with it and take a well, bow and. You well, know, well. Um, unless they were talking something real serious. Well, audience, since we're telling stories, this has um, this young lady here to share one of her bloopers, can you? <laughs> Can you see one of your bloopers? I mean, we're all yeah, here. really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, give us a story now. Yeah, they have some time where you, you got, got a blooper now. I don't think I've been doing this long enough to say I I, I have a blooper because mm. part of it is you know all my bloopers I edit. Mm. <laughs> You're not gonna see them, oh. but um, yeah. I can't really think of one wow. to tell you the truth. She, she is perfect out of Not perfect. Her. I do a lot of editing, folks. You know that. <laughs> but, you know. But we're all human. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I make bloopers all the time. You know, in my intros, may not always be as smooth as I would like. And even my own poem, I stumble over as if I don't even know that I wrote it. <laughs> but the key thing is i'm not embarrassed about anything that i do because i do it not just for me but for all of you and you see that's the power of it is to use your own passionate heart pull the courage and know that what you're doing is going to be bigger than me one day as i fade away into eternity 
And so, just like you gentlemen, you've done some powerful work that will leave its mark long after you all are gone. And, and that's why I just felt the need to show some respect and, and, and let you know your value to us and to those that will be looking now especially to see what you've done. And hopefully this will be an opportunity for others to seek out the observer too and see what the legacy of it is because you know, when we do something for us, you know, we need us to support it, you know, and things have changed. A lot of what's happening with the newspaper now has gone in a techie type of way, correct? I mean, computerized. Digital. 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 Yes, yes. And, you know, what's the effect of that on the newspaper? Is that something you want to speak about or is that something I should one day speak to them about? Well, I think it's a good thing that things are more, you know, viral and... Mm -hmm. I could shoot a photo, it could go around the world in a matter of minutes, really. I mean, that's just the digital age now, which that's is right. great. You know, write the story, put it out. And the fact that you can shoot a picture and see what, it, what you shot. <laughs> so you can edit, you know, you can maybe shoot the next shot, you can just think more about how you want to shoot that by looking at a picture you just shot. So it, yes. it's, it's open it up so we get more of a, a view of what's going on right. as we go along. So. Large panoramic view. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. You wanted to say something? Well, I mean, back in the film days, we, we, we couldn't see our images, you know, previews and all that. Right. That's why we were in so much demand, yes. because of they knew we knew our craft, really. Yes. So money was good in the 80s and, you know, 90s, but, and, and until digital came out, you know, put Kodak out of business, really, you know, the film and all yeah. that. But the other positive thing about the digital thing is, too, is that all of a sudden, you didn't have to worry about running out of film in the middle of a shoot or something like that. You can just shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs> shoot, shoot and so, shoot. the more you're able to shoot, a lot of times, the better picture you could get. You know, stuff like that. So, um, Well, you know what? I got my iPhone over there shooting, mm -hmm. too. So, I understand that, you know, the power of, you know, being the photographer yourself or the camera woman. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do want to share one thing. I'm going to give the second one, um, I'll observe some credit. Yes. I mean, back in the days, again, as independent photographers, we had to buy our own film. So it made, I think it made me a better photographer. It probably made Larry too, because at, at, at those times we had like 36 exposures. Mm -hmm. I could go to a Kings game back in the days and have one roll of film or two, maybe two rolls of film if, mm -hmm. if I was fortunate. Mm -hmm. I mean, the B, the other newspapers, they had bricks of film, mm -hmm. 20 in a, in a brick, mm -hmm. you know, 20 wow. uh, rolls of film. So they're shooting crazy. But see, it taught us to get better photos, yeah. timing, everything was all... was. Our talent. So there. it's not the the quantity; it was the quality of the and cast true. because you could not afford to have as many of those roles. Is what you're saying? It, exactly. Yeah. They, they shoot like you know, like a, like a machine gun. You know, right. so many frames a second. But on um, our cameras was a little slower. But it taught me to be a better better photographer. Really. But mm -hmm. isn't that true of our lives as a, a people of African descent? You know, the fact that we have the littlest, we have to go the farthest we're back. Always the best. We always have to yes. push forward and make the best out of it. All the yeah. athletes are mainly yeah. African Americans, stronger people, you know. I mean you got Ali, I mean there's different people we we you know Yes, so we strive people. yeah. And so with that, um I'm just gonna ask you all to, you know, say something to the generations that's coming behind you that may you know, it's been thinking about becoming a photographer and thinking about, you know, what it's like to document, because we're going to continue to need the documentation of our story. I mean, history is history, really. I mean, my thing is, uh, with, uh, the story with Edith Roberts, the Skiggy Airman, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, the white press didn't cover the, um, the black um, airmen, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. it, was a, it was a black media that covered all that. Right. I mean, it would have been lost, would have been lost in history, really. Right. You know? So I it's mean, very important. I mean, I sat down with Edith, you know, Miss Roberts, and she told me the stories. You know, I mean, having her only the 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 whole her housing, the suite, you know, all by herself. She, you know, her husband was the first um, cadet to graduate from the Tuskegee Airplane mm -hmm. um, Program. Yeah, yeah. Like that was gonna be a failure. You know, they were all oh, blast can't fly airplanes and all that. Right. But my thing is. Um, Again, if it wasn't for the black press, we would have been, it would have been lost history. Look at that. And they have all the, they had all the newspaper clippings and all that. She got married. I mean, it's a great story. And who, what's she her does. name? Edith Roberts. And Look she her. was a. She was the first. Um, her yeah. husband was the first one to graduate from the, the whole program. The Skiggy Airmen. Yes. They had the movies made after them. Okay. You know, um, okay. Cuba Jr. He plays. Mr. Roberts, okay. um, Snakey Roberts. So you capture her picture? I capture her, and he died in 86, 1986. Okay. So you got his picture too? Um, I don't know if I really shot him or not. It's okay. just going way back. I started, like I said, in 80, 
82, 80, okay. 84, really. Okay. But uh, he was around then. But yeah. it was just an honor just to, yeah. to meet with wow. these people. Again, if the black press didn't cover that, it would have been lost history. Yes. And I, again, not to, not to sound racist or nothing no, like that, no. but they didn't cover us. And it's important to it. tell the story the proper way because we, we do the there's two the narratives to a story sometimes. You know, there's a whole African statement is the the lion, uh, the version of the story will be told differently by the lion than the hunter. That's true. You know, and so I'm glad you brought that up. And it's so important, our history. Yes. Very important. And you did mention you were a pilot. You fly... Cessnas, small Cessnas. planes. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, so planes. did you, have you been doing that for a while? I started in early 2000s, really, but I, Shimmer, I haven't been doing it lately. I've okay. I've been caring for okay. that and yes. I'm doing my thing. And that's the dedication when we have to take time for our families and, you know, and do our part. And, you know, I, I always want to shout out people that become uh, non-selfish because you know, when we start off, we have our parents there for us, and there'll be a time that we have to be there for them, and, and we have to choose, you know, because that's, that's the kind of people that we come from, you know, before historically. You know, I spent 22 years caring for my mother, 22 years, and, I, you know, that was a long time, a you know, but the, the creator has a way of giving it back to you higher quality, you know, because there's nothing more valuable than when you take care of those that took care of you. So respect to you, and I know you're doing caregiving right now for your lady. Respect for you, and for you all to find time to come and, and share your story with me is even that much more valuable. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you made it out yes. to my home. To yes, we're in, uh, uh, <laughs> we're in Robert Maryland's home being, being recorded, and, and boy, if you could see his home, it's absolutely beautiful. So, you know, you can make money doing this photographic <laughs> stuff, too. I just want to let you know, <laughs> especially if you do it well and, you know, so, um, Thank you. anything else you wanted to throw in and say, sir? Because I'm going to wrap it up now and let these folks know that, uh, hey, hit thumbs up, share, leave a comment, subscribe, because I'm doing this for us. Whether I get paid or not, I'm sure. still going to tell the story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going to say one thing I would say is that for both of us, it was just such a dream, fantasy, whatever you want to call it, yes. to be photographers, to cover the kind of people we covered. And you asked if we have any special things that we shot, so like that. When we shot Nelson Mandela, that was big for me. Just Nelson! To shoot him, I had to shoot him at the at the, uh, the, the flight lines, and Robert went to the Coliseum and shot him, right? Right, wow. yeah. Coliseum. But just to be there, knowing that he had gotten out of jail after yeah. hearing so much about all the stuff he had to go through, being yeah. in prison and all that stuff, it just... It was just such a great Sweet. moment for both of us, you yes. know. And, uh, wow! So every time Did I you talk to him too? Or? No, we didn't get to talk. Yeah, to him. but just no, he was too big. Man. Wow! We were just there to get capture his images and stuff well, like you that. You were there. Yeah, you were there. Yay! <laughs> mm -hmm. Yay! Well, congratulations to that. And so yeah, we're gonna yeah, wind yeah. down, folks. Yeah. And uh, again, thank you both, Mr. Larry Dalton. Appreciate that. Mr. Robert Marilyn, That's thank me. you very much for being a part of uh, Ms. Roshima's Let's Talk and Grow, <laughs> because I've grown a lot from talking to you both today. And uh, I'm going to finish like I always do with one of my poems. Right. And hey, I don't know if this poem relates to what we're talking about. It's one I wrote in 2015. It's called Change. Change is inevitable. It's the only thing that is real. It's never paid attention to. Its subtleness is the backdrop to time. Change is not a word to take slightly. Its effect is always felt mightily. It's like a child that's given to you, oh, so brand new. Then with the subtle wind of change, when you believe the complexity of the game, of push and pull, up and down, you look around and you as you look around as you stand alone, wondering what just went down. He's gone into his own. Change the measure of me and do you. Now that time has created a history for you and me, 
Isn't it funny that when we look back, all that is remembered and prized is the glee in our hearts? Never to see the inward pain we feel that threatened to upset this eventual peace? I mean chaos. No, I mean peace. It's a cycle, you see, of the ups and downs of you and me. The season is another reason for the pause, because the change stands to win over everything in its path. It's inevitable from the start. The trees yield its green leaves to golden oranges, uh, pinks of the fall season. Yes, an incredible show while slowly dying is still pleasing. For change would not have it any other way. Teasing. Now, unto the young who will change to the old through the numerous seasons that their lifetime will show, that they too are affected by the chains that be. That unique mold of time is revealed in the essence of you and me. Memories faded, youthful faces shaded by the mysteries of who we become long after changes have visited us. What does it mean? Where are we heading to? Whose destiny is it anyway? The wind knows, if only it can pause and let me in on its secret so I can tell the story accurately. A lifetime of living neatly hidden in a word called mystery. Change has moved too rapidly, blazing through everything that we see. <sighs> Take a deep breath because it's not over yet. Let the dew of winter morning mists remind you that you are a living testament of the change, a blessing that is given from the Creator, saying it's the essence of you, my sons and daughters. Ashe o, ashe o. So, hey, again, thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment, and if you see any of these gentlemen moving around on the street, say, hey, I know you now. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again, and God bless. Thank ashe. You. So now you know, it's time to grow at Let's Talk and Grow with Ms. Rushumba. Let the healing begin.